Today I want to tell you five lessons I learned from leading a double life, being a guitar teacher by day and a power lifter by night. Have you ever killed anyone? Yeah, but they were all bad. Believe it or not, but pretty much every major philosophy that I have about practicing, guitar technique training, building speed, undoing bad habits, and everything I talk about on this channel has been influenced in some way, shape, or form by how powerlifters train and how I train myself to become a better powerlifter over the past eight years or so. And I'm not just talking about the cheesy stuff like you've got to set goals and you've got to visualize success and you've got to rest and all that stuff that is pretty simple. Everybody already talks about that. I'm talking about things that most people don't talk or even think about, but that nonetheless can help you improve a lot faster as a guitar player. So let's dive right in. The first thing I learned is how to make something easier to play or harder to play without either slowing it down or making it faster. You can stay at the same tempo and make something a lot harder to play or a lot easier to play depending on how you play it. Now powerlifters do this all the time with the movements they compete in, which are the back squat, the bench press, and the deadlift. You can take the same weight on the bar and make something remarkably harder to do just by changing how you do the movement. For example, on the back squat, you can go down slower with the weight and all of a sudden the same weight feels harder. If you pause at the bottom, now the weight feels even harder still. If you combine both of those things, now you have to probably have to take the weight off the bar because now the same movement feels a lot more challenging. Or if you accelerate through the movement, now the same weight suddenly feels easier. So the point is, you can have the same weight on the bar and have it feel remarkably different depending on how you do the movement. Here are some ways you can do this on guitar. Stay at the same tempo, just play fewer notes. You can also put breaks in between the repetition. So instead of playing an arpeggio over and over like this, you can play it once, stop, then play it once again, stop, and put breaks in between every repetition like this. We haven't changed the tempo, but we made the arpeggio a lot easier to play by putting these little breaks in between every repetition. You can also stay at the same tempo and separate the hands. And let's say you're going to cover the strings with the fretting hand like this, and just do the picking hand motions only of the lick you're trying to practice without slowing it down. This may make it easier to play or harder to play depending on how well you know the picking motions, but the point is it's going to feel a lot different at the same tempo and you're not going to be using the fretting hand at all. You can also flip it around and just do the fretting hand motions while the picking hand is just resting on the strings, not picking any notes, and you're also not hearing any sound coming out, but you're forced to learn the fretting hand motions more thoroughly. Idea number dos, proprioception. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It is ergonomically correct. Proprioception basically means awareness of your body moving through space without looking. Now in powerlifting, proprioception is a huge piece of learning the technique of the movements you're going to be competing in. Take for example the back squat, where your goal is to keep the bar path as straight as possible, which is going to be the most efficient way to do the movement with the most amount of weight. And to learn to keep the bar path as straight as possible, what you want to do is not just bang the reps out as quickly as possible, but slow them down. So one exercise powerlifters do is something called tempo squats, where where you deliberately slow down the descent up to two seconds, three seconds, or maybe even four full seconds, which is a really long time, by the way. And as you go down this slowly with the weight, you get to feel exactly every area of your body, every millimeter of the motion, how everything is responding, and that makes you super aware of any weaknesses in your technique that you'll need to bring up to make your squat stronger. So on guitar, what I tell people to do is to go far beyond just playing slowly, but actually experience every element of even the simplest of motions. For instance, if I tell you to just play one note, chances are you'll just be, oh, okay, that's simple, just do this. And you would think all of that was just one action. Play one note, you did one action. No, you did a whole bunch of things that all happened really, really quickly that, for most people, go unexamine their entire guitar playing lives. Before you can play a note, you first have to sit with the guitar and be comfortable. And most people, believe it or not, can't even do that. So, first step is to just sit like this and be relaxed. Second step is you want to bring the arm to the guitar without raising the shoulder, without tensing up your jaw or this shoulder or tensing up your feet or doing anything else weird in your technique. Even doing that is a step in and of itself, just bringing your hand to the guitar and be relaxed. Then you want to know how to apply pressure to the string the right way without tying these fingers up with tension and having them fly away from the strings and become tense like this. And then of course you want to pick the note without using inefficient motions where the pick is flying away from the strings or doing anything crazy like this. Come. Fly with me, come 
fly away. So I just gave you four or five things that need to happen for you to just play one note. But most people never go this deep into building awareness of their technique. They just think, oh, play one note, one thing needs to happen. And it is inside this deep level of awareness that you build by putting each element of your guitar playing mechanism under your mental microscope is where you'll find the root causes of your inefficiencies, your mistakes, and all the problems in your playing and all the obstacles to you playing as well as you want. And only after you fix each one and refine each one one at a time, you're going to start to feel bigger and bigger breakthroughs in how how easy guitar playing feels. Now, most people never go that deep because they don't understand this proprioception practice stuff, but now you have a better understanding of what it's all about. I'm the master of the mechanical stuff! And by the way, if you have some licks that you practice that you have a harder time playing them slow, but you can play them fast with no problem, that's a clue that you need some work in this proprioception area of your playing. For some reason, I can't slow it down. This is why, by the way, smart powerlifters don't train with mirrors so they get to feel their body without having this feedback from their eyes by looking into a mirror. Now, on guitar, it's a little bit different. I do tell most people to practice with a mirror or even several mirrors in some cases, but I also tell people to practice with their eyes closed precisely to train the proprioception area of your guitar playing awareness that you'd never be able to build just by looking in the mirror all the time. Idea number three, exaggeration. This is huge. And this is where you prime your central nervous system and your brain to make something easier to do or to feel before you attempt it. In powerlifting, it happens like this. Let's say you're trying to do a 10 rep max on the bench press with 100 kilos. And so what you want to do is do a single or one repetition with, let's say, 120 or 130 kilos first to prime your muscles and your central nervous system to get used to a heavier weight. And then that 100 kilos for 10 reps is going to feel a heck of a lot easier compared to you just going into it cold or building up to it, but not attempting any heavier weight beforehand. So how can you use this for guitar? Well, tons of ways. So I talked about this in my video on stretching, for example, which you can check out right here. If you have a difficult chord shape that you're trying to get used to, instead of just practicing it where it is actually going to happen on guitar, which is fret 9 in this case, go down to like fret 4 and make it really, really hard for yourself and then go back to fret 9 is going to feel a lot easier. And that's going to build your confidence, it's going to build your flexibility throughout your wrist by first exaggerating the difficulty first before going back to the original. You can do the same thing with guitar speed. If your goal tempo for the day is 120 beats per minute, set the tempo to 130 beats per minute and just do quick little bursts of fast playing there even if it's sloppy, don't worry about it. Then go back down to 120 and you'll be amazed by how much easier it's going to feel. This is also why I'm a big proponent of practicing unplugged and hitting the strings as hard as possible because when you then turn distortion on, turn the amp back on, your hands are going to lock in sync much tighter after doing that. Idea number four, efficiency is where it's at. Now in powerlifting, efficiency a lot of the times wins over raw brute strength or muscle mass. Take the bench press as a prime example. If you're flexible enough to have an extremely high high bench press arch, you're going to have a much reduced range of motion that's going to allow you to put up a lot more weight on the bench press in the end than someone who may even have more muscle mass or more strength than you do. On guitar, efficiency is way more important than raw speed. It's way more important than how fast you can wiggle the pick or how fast you can move your fingers. This is why I talk about things like keeping your pick as close as possible to the strings unless you're changing strings and avoid having the pick bounce away from the strings after each note. This is why I talk about using directional picking. This is why I talk about using hand independence where you're not using extra tension, let's say in this hand, in response to what the pick is doing. This is why I talk about excessive tension control as you play. And all the other things that build the efficiency into your technique and is going to allow speed and accurate playing to be a byproduct of all of that. The more efficiency you can bake into your technique without sacrificing articulation or accuracy, the faster you'll play and the better that speed will sound. Guaranteed. And finally, idea number five is the philosophy of outcome versus process orientation. So an outcome-based goal, let's say in powerlifting, would be this. I want to increase my squat max by 10 kilos in the next three months. 
The problem with that is you have zero control over how much your squat's gonna increase in three months or how long it's gonna take for your squat max to increase by 10 kilos. And on guitar, people often set these same outcome-based goals that are detached from any reality. Like, I wanna increase my speed by this amount of beats per minute in this time frame. Well, you have no clue if that's realistic or not. The only things you control when it comes to goal setting are the actions that you take, the processes that you use to move your playing forward or to reach any other kind of goal. So instead of setting random outcome-based goals, well, I'll give this little cookie an hour before we're doing the no pants dance. Maximize the process. In powerlifting, that means finding the best training program that you can, be as consistent as you can in your training, be as intense and as focused as you can when you train with zero distractions, be as ruthless as you can in maximizing your recovery, your sleep, your diet, your other recovery methods, so you're ready for the next day of training when it comes. The same thing applies to guitar. Maximize the process and let the outcome fall where it may. So if your playing is consistently stuck in a rut week after week, well, something obviously needs to change in your inputs, in the actions, in the process you're using. That's when you go back to the drawing board, recalibrate the actions you're taking, take newer actions or better actions, and then reassess your progress again, and that is how you continuously refine your practice mechanism that's gonna make your playing improve year after year. So there you have it, five simple tips that I learned from powerlifting that made me a better guitar player and a better guitar teacher. And this is just scratching the surface. And if you guys like this video, I may make more videos like this on powerlifting philosophies and tricks and tips about practicing that you can use for your guitar playing as well. In the meantime, if you wanna know more about making more progress in your guitar practicing with less practice time, hit the link below. I'm gonna show you five of my biggest guitar playing and progress accelerators that I found over 20 years of playing and teaching guitar some of them from powerlifting, some of them from other spheres of life. Either way, if you want to know what they are, they're free. Check out the link below, enter your email address, I'll send them right over to you. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you know every time I upload a new video just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. See you next time.